trout fishing on big lakes. You got a ton of water to cover, so many baits and techniques to use. Where do you start? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share seven tips to help you catch more trout on big lakes. What is going on you Outdoor Mavericks? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be all about big lake trout fishing. And this is where I grew up and spent most of my youth out trout fishing with my mom and dad and grandpa. Now for some, trout fishing can be really intimidating on fishing for big lakes, but hopefully these seven tips I'm gonna talk about today are gonna to help you break down the water and be more successful right away. Now tip number seven is gonna to be to use your electronics. And that means using your fish finder and doing a little bit of e-scouting before you hit the water to set yourself up for success. Now before you get to the water, you want to do a little bit of e-scouting. Use some maps and be able to figure out where the deeper holes of water are, the different contours and locations on the lake that you may want to target the trout. Now when you get to the water, you want to use your electronics to eliminate water and try to find where the fish are. Some days they're going to be up shallow, some days they're going to be a little bit deeper. They may be on different parts of the lake. And as you start to go out for your day and you're not spotting any fish on the finder, you can move fairly easily. And what you can do is start eliminating water. Maybe the trout aren't there. Maybe come back to that later in the afternoon. They might be a little bit deeper than you might think. And so you're able to get your gear down into the right location. But use the electronics that you have at your disposal to help yourself set up for success before you hit the water and then when you hit the water. Now tip number six is going to be to cover ground. And that's from either the boat, a kayak, or if you're bank fishing. Now when it comes to covering a lot of water, you can do that fairly easily in a kayak and a boat. And one of the things that you have an advantage of is to eliminate water maybe where the fish aren't and being able to figure out where the fish are, you know, covering a lot of water, a lot of different areas, and a lot of different pockets. You know, if you're bank fishing too, go try different pockets of water. Move around and try to find some different areas, maybe where the fish are held up. And this is where just covering more ground is gonna give you a better opportunity. You know, you're gonna have your usual spots in the lake where the trout are gonna hang out, but you're gonna have days where maybe they're not there, the water conditions have changed, and they've moved around or scattered a bunch. And this is where you need to cover a lot of ground to give yourself the best opportunity to locate and get some hookups. Now tip number five is to fish drop-offs right near the bank. Now whether you're in the boat or you're bank fishing, you want to find those drop-off locations where you maybe you go from three feet to five feet all the way down to 15. And what you're going to see is the trout are going to be held up on those drops and on those downfalls. They're going to be sitting in that cooler water. Now being able to find those locations, whether you're in the boat in a kayak or if you know a spot from the bank, is going to give you a huge advantage. And a lot of times with those drop-offs, you get a little bit of a break in the current, you're going to get some cooler water and you're going to get that thermocline and some oxygen and probably some food around that area which the trout are really going to love. So make sure if you're going out and doing some scouting and when you get to like find those drop off areas and you should have a ton of success finding trout in those locations. And when it comes to drop offs, rock walls or dams are great examples of big drop offs where the trout may hang out where the water is cooler, especially in the summertime. So find those on the graph and start there in those warmer days and you should have a ton of success. Now tip number four is to follow the temperature and on big lakes in particular when you got cooler water the trout are going to come in shallow and closer to the bank they're going to be on top of the water and when you've got warmer days and warmer water the fish are going to go back out into the deeper cooler water so pay attention to what the water temperature is and what time of the year it is to understand where you should be fishing on the lake. Now you're going to have transitions in the spring to the summer and then the summer into the fall when you got some big grass temperature changes in terms of the water but also the temperature outside so pay attention use your electronics look where you're at when you're bank fishing to see whether those fish are coming in a little bit shallower or if they're going out a little bit deeper being able to understand where the fish are at in those different temperature situations is going to put you on the fish and have more hookups now by paying attention to the temperatures it should give you a clear direction and a game plan when you get out to the lake on how you're going to fish where you're going to fish and where the fish are going to be now tip number three is to find water flow locations. Things like inlets are great examples where you got flowing water, you got current, you got oxygen, you got food, all the things that trout really love. You want to find that flowing water and cool water because that's where the trout are going to hang out the most, especially in the warmer times of the year. But on big lakes, even in the winter time, you want to find a little bit of that water movement because that's where the oxygen is going to be and where the fish are going to want to hang out. Maybe in warmer areas, maybe closer to the surface or even closer to the bank in those areas where the water is moving. So anytime I'm going out trout fishing on a big lake, I'm looking at the map, 
map, and this is part of the pre-scouting before you get out there, is where's the inlets, where is the water flowing, maybe off the mountains, in some creeks, in some streams, into the big lake, and that's where I'm gonna start my trout fishing day, because in those locations, they're the highest percentage of where you're gonna find trout, especially early in the morning, and when there's a bug hatch, guarantee there's gonna be trout sitting there, and it's gonna be game on. Now, tip number two is for boaters and kayak anglers, which is to stop, anchor up, and start jigging. That's right, I said to start jigging for trout. Now, jigging is a great technique in that late spring and in the summertime when the warmer waters and the warmer temperatures push the fish into the cooler waters deeper down. I've seen where lakes are 100 feet plus and those fish are way down there, say 50 feet down. That's a long ways to get trolling gear down there. Now, whether you got a jig, where you got some night crawlers or some sort of bait with some weight down, you know, 40, 50, even like 100 feet sometimes to get into the trout strike zone, you could use jigging as an amazing technique to get after those big trout. So I would recommend grabbing some jigging gear and getting it down into the strike zone where you're seeing the fish on the grab. Because a lot of times those fish are gonna be way down there, they're gonna be suspended, they're gonna be in that thermocline, and if you can find the distance from the top of the water where those fish are suspended and hanging out, they're gonna go crazy for it and you're gonna have an epic day of fishing. And my number one tip for big lake trout fishing is to find food source areas where the trout are gonna be. Now when I'm talking about food sources for trout, I'm talking about inlets, I'm talking about flowing water, I'm talking about creeks or little inlets where you might have crawdads, I'm talking about areas that have bug hatch on the top of the water, I'm also talking about the thermocline area where you've got oxygen and cool water and plenty of food where the fish are gonna hang out. And also don't forget underwater springs, those are areas that have oxygen, water flow, and where food is gonna be plentiful for the trout to go after. On big lakes, you're gonna have areas where there's gonna be food that maybe is stacked up or in a specific area that the trout are really gonna congregate to. And you just have to go figure out and find those locations where there's flowing water and oxygen. And when you can figure out what the food sources are on the lake and where the trout are gonna be stacked up to go after that food, you're gonna find them and you're gonna be able to target them fairly easily in those locations. And then throughout the year, you wanna figure out on the lake where the best food source locations are and that's gonna give you a huge advantage and direct you every time you go out to the lake as to where you should start trout fishing. All right guys, and those are my seven big lake trout fishing tips. Now I hope you guys got some tips and information out of today's video to help you catch more trout the next time you hit the water. So if you enjoyed the tips out of today's video, hit the thumbs up on that video guys. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you love trout fishing, trout fishing tips, and other outdoor content. And don't forget, and as always you guys, the outdoors is a gift, share it with others.